So I know we just started 2024, but I think we all need a Disney World vacation, and I have an idea. Let's take one together today so you can find out how to rock a full six days in the most magical place on Earth before your trip actually legit kicks off. Deal? Deal. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and I think you deserve to go on a six-day Disney World trip. Don't you agree? I think you should agree. So just to make sure you hit up all the most important stuff, and you do so as efficiently as possible, we're going to walk through this week-long trip right alongside you to highlight the best rides, the best shows, the restaurants, the character meet and greets that you should not miss. There's a lot to see and do in Disney World, but if you want to continue planning your trip's details with the help of yours truly, plus the rest of the DFB team, be sure to scan the QR code you see on the screen now or head to disneyfoodblog.com slash disney plans and you can download our disney world planning worksheets now you don't have to have these for this video <laughs> we're still going to tell you what to do for those six days but these are going to be super super helpful when you start planning your actual disney trip they're completely free worksheets and they're going to be a digital companion that's going to help you keep track of those tried and true disney tips and the tricks and personal plans whether you're still in the process of scheduling things or you're knees deep in the parks and want to handy dandy checklist to refer back to when you need it most. Okay, so it's time to go on our trip. We are arriving at Disney World. I don't know if you've driven or if you've flown in, but it's time to go. So either way, you finally made it to Orlando and you're starting your Disney World vacation. To really maximize your vacation time, it is best to arrive inside the Disney bubble as early as you can by either booking that early flight or pacing out your driving schedule so you'll arrive on day one sometime in the morning, just as long as that works with your vacation schedule, of course. Why do we recommend that? Well, basically, you want to squeeze as much out of this vacation as you can. It's really, really expensive. And if you're spending money on a hotel night, you might as well get a whole day out of it, right? So along those lines, if you're planning on staying at a Disney-owned hotel during your trip, your room probably won't be ready for you to check into until around 3 or 4 p.m. That being said, that doesn't mean you can't start taking advantage of your Disney hotel offerings just as soon as you get there. So Bell Services can hold on to your luggage for you so you don't have to tote it around all day, and then you can go explore your hotel ASAP. I promise, the cast members don't mind, they'll be excited for you. Each resort has gift shops and restaurants, daily activities for you to experience. You may even want to take a dip in the pool if you've got your swimwear handy. All the pools have good bathrooms nearby where you can change into your swimsuit. This is also a good time for you to travel over to Disney Springs, maybe, since you don't need a park ticket to explore those restaurants and shops and activities either. While you're busy playing, Disney's going to continue getting your room prepped and ready, and you should receive a text or My Disney Experience push notification, letting you know when your room is ready for you once it is. That is if you've done online check-in or if you've already checked in at the front desk. Make sure you check in or else they can't tell you your room's ready. So after moving into your new home away from home, it'll be time to start thinking about dinner. Personally, I always like to kick off my Disney World trips by booking a nice dinner somewhere for the sake of celebration. A few resort recommendations you may want to consider are Ohana over at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. That's going to be a very tropical vacation-y first dinner. That's the one I always like to go to and I get a giant lapu-lapu and a pineapple so that I can really just christen that vacation that's starting. Then there's Yachtsman's Steakhouse at Disney's Yacht Club Resort. Maybe you want a higher end dinner. Maybe you want to really relax into luxury for your first meal. Steakhouse 71 at Disney's Contemporary Resort is a great option if you want awesome food at a more budget price tag than maybe Yachtsman Steakhouse. Great steakhouse cuts here at Steakhouse 71 for a a slightly lower price. Now, if you want to jump into characters first thing, I recommend going to Artist Point Storybook Dining with Snow White at Disney's Wilderness Resort. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite restaurants right now. I think the food is excellent. The character interaction is amazing. You don't get to see all of those characters because you've got Snow White, you've got Grumpy, you've got Dopey, and the Evil Queen who you never get to see except for here, so that's exciting. Or you can go to Sanaa, Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. Just make sure you go when it's still light outside so you can see all of those savanna animals outside. So ease into your vacation with an incredible dinner, maybe some night swimming at the pool when you get back to the hotel and then get to bed early so you can really make the most of your first day in the parks.
Okay, on day two of our vacation together, we are going to Magic Kingdom. Now, this might be day two of your vacation, but it's day one of being in the park. So, since you've got all that built up adrenaline and you're ready to take on this vacation, let's start in the park where you're probably going to need that vacation high the most. The OG park, Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom is the park with the most rides, so we're going to talk about rides here first today. And while not every ride is probably one you want to prioritize, Many of them will be, since they're mostly iconic. So if you want to make sure you're getting on as many rides as possible during your one and only Magic Kingdom day, I'd recommend going the Disney Genie Plus route. Now, for things like Genie Plus and virtual queues, we're going to talk about a lot of terminology today in this video. If you're not sure what that means, we're going to put it up on the screen for you, kind of a little definition of what it is. But we also have other videos that explain that stuff in detail. So we'll give you those links too. Anyway, which rides should you be prioritizing? If you and your group love rides with a little more of the thrill element, then you're going to want to focus your energy on the mountains. Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain. So Magic Kingdom is also home to one of the most popular family coasters, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, and of course that newest coaster, Tron Light Cycle Run, but you won't be able to book a lightning lane for either one through the standard Genie Plus service. Instead, you'll have to use the second premium tool type, that individual lightning lane entry tool, which is set up in more of an a la carte fashion. You gotta buy those rides individually, they're not gonna be included in your other Genie Plus purchase. Now, if you decide you don't wanna pay for an individual lightning lane, Again, you don't necessarily have to, but at the time of this recording, the only other way to get on Tron is by booking a free virtual queue through the My Disney Experience app. Currently, Tron doesn't use a normal standby queue like most other rides, though that could change later on this year. And that's because another virtual queue for Tiana's Bayou Adventure is probably going to go live once that ride does, later on in 2024. Just make sure you're familiar with how that virtual queue system works or plan on saving for those individual lightning lanes if you want to skip over the virtual queue stress entirely. Now, if you skip the Genie Plus slash individual lightning lane purchase, then the coasters that do have those physical standby queues are a good place to start your day, especially if you're planning on getting to the park right when it opens, aka by rope drop, or you want to use your early theme park entry park if you're staying at a Disney World hotel. The start of the day is typically when you're going to see the shortest Disney lines. By early to mid-afternoon, lines are going to start to peak. After you conquer the coasters, you might want to start in on your dark ride journey next. Peter Pan's Flight, Jungle Cruise, Haunted Mansion, and Pirates of the Caribbean are some of the most popular options that we're going to want to add to the top of our to-do list. And don't forget to say a grim grinning hello to the Haunted Mansion's newest resident, the Hatbox Ghost, who materialized for the first time in Magic Kingdom at the end of last year. Well, technically for the second time. He was there for like a second, right? When the ride first opened and then he didn't work and they took him down. But now he works. It's cool. Rides like Dumbo the Flying Elephant, It's a Small World, and Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid are a lot of fun too, but they tend to have much shorter wait times than the others. Though that doesn't mean they can't get long, they do tend to make great filler rides when other queues are starting to look super intense. So we'll sprinkle these into our day when things get a little hectic at the other rides. All right, it's midday. Now we can't have y'all running on empty around the Magic Kingdom, so let's grab some grub. If we don't have time to sit down and eat a big meal at lunchtime, then there are a couple of quick services we're gonna rely on instead. My favorite Magic Kingdom quick service is right now Columbia Harbor House over in Liberty Square, cause it's hearty, they've got grilled and fried service, and turf options and they have one of my favorite things in the whole wide world those hush puppies and they have an interesting dessert right now too that we're gonna get I think they have that Boston cream pie pudding stuff but if you're looking for some more basic theme park eats like burgers and hot dogs and cosmic rays in Tomorrowland that's gonna have us covered if we've got some picky eaters in the mix plus you'll be able to listen to the musical stylings of sunny eclipse while we're there which makes the visit all the more worthwhile now if we don't want to sit down for a quick service meal even if we don't want to spend that much time because we've got too many other things to do in Magic Kingdom, we're probably going to get a couple of snacks. Here are some of my favorites. One of the most iconic options, of course, are the Dole Whips you can find in Adventureland, both at Aloha Isle and Sunshine Tree Terrace. But we might head right outside of Adventureland and track down the Adventureland spring roll cart and pick up an order of the cheeseburger spring rolls or the pizza spring rolls or whatever they've got there during our visit. Because these fried little dudes might be kind of pricey, but they tend to hit the spot when we want a snack that's more filling without being too filling. And we can also walk and eat. So let's go get in line. What are we getting in line for? Well, 
the ride lines are getting a little bit long right now and things are getting a little hot and crazy. So let's head over to shows. Now, there aren't as many shows in Magic Kingdom as there are rides, but there's enough of them that you'll have to pick and choose what we want to see during the day. Some of the shows run continuously, like Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, Fill Our Magic, Enchanted Tales with Belle, Hall of Presidents, and Carousel of Progress. Usually I'd throw Country Bear Jamboree in the mix too, but this grizzly animatronic stage show is going to close on January 27th to begin its big transformation. And the new Country Bear Musical Jamboree will open up later this summer with updates inspired by the Opry style shows of Nashville, Tennessee. So we're not going to see Country Bears while we're there, probably unless we go after this summer. Now, we can also catch one of two live performances taking place during the day, or both of them if we want to. The first is Mickey's Magical Friendship Fair. That takes place on Cinderella Castle's main stage and happens a few times during the day between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Times can vary. We'll check our My Disney Experience app for them. And the second kind of live show is the Festival of Fantasy Parade, which, depending on the crowd levels, will only happen once or twice, once around noon, once in the afternoon. I think we're at the only once a day in the afternoon time frame right now now. Okay, we're going to head back to our hotel for a little rest because it's been a busy day. Maybe we're going to swim in the pool. Maybe we're going to take a nap. Probably I will do some voiceovers because that's what I do when I go back to my room in the middle of the day in Disney World. And then we're going to head back to Magic Kingdom for the evening. So that's right. You can absolutely leave a park and then come back later on in the day. That's okay. You can also leave a park. And if you have a park hopper ticket, you can go to another park later on in that day or as many parks as you want to. But it is absolutely okay even if you have just a one day ticket to leave the park and come back later on. So we're going to head back to Magic Kingdom just in time for dinner. Now, our options for a sit-down meal in Magic Kingdom are okay. They're decent, but let's talk about our character options. Cinderella's Royal Table and Crystal Palace. Cinderella's Royal Table gives us a chance to dine inside Cinderella Castle, where we get to meet a ton of Disney princesses during our meal. And because the restaurant's popular, we want to prioritize with an advanced dining reservation, which will go live 60 days before our visit, starting at 6 a.m. Eastern. Meanwhile, Crystal Palace is a good sit-down option if you're looking for a buffet-style setup where you can meet the 100-acre wood gang for pictures, autographs, and lots of hugs. This is a very good one for a variety of different palettes because, again, it's a buffet, so they have lots of different stuff there. It's also an easier restaurant to book than Cinderella's Royal Table. Now, if we didn't make dining reservations before our visit because this is a spontaneous visit, we just decided to go last minute we can probably get into one of my very favorite restaurants in Magic Kingdom, the Jungle Cruise-inspired Skipper Canteen in Adventureland. That's got super unique food, really, really fun atmosphere, and hilarious servers. Now, if that's not for you, because usually it can be kind of hard for super picky eaters to find things to eat there, then we might go to Tony's Town Square, which is Lady and the Tramp theme. It has a garlic bread appetizer right now that's really good, and it has those foot-long mozzarella sticks, which I mean, who doesn't want those? Or my nostalgia might kick in and we might go to Liberty Tree Tavern, which has, of course, been one of my favorite restaurants in the Magic Kingdom for my whole Disney life. And I even used to go there back when they had characters there. They actually had characters there for a long time and they dressed up in Halloween costumes on Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party Nights. So if you remember that, if you're as old as I am and you remember that, raise your hand in the comments. (laughs) Okay, after dinner and before the fireworks, we might go see a few characters. Now, Magic Kingdom's got a bunch of characters you can meet inside the park. Most of them aren't sort of roaming. Some of them are roaming, but most of them have set meet and greets. Here are a few of the most popular ones. We'll put them on the screen for you now. Now, even if the lines for some of these characters get a little too long for your liking, they may show up at other parks during our trip too. You just want to make sure to prioritize the characters who seem to only stick around Magic Kingdom, like Mirabelle, and Peter Pan. All right, are we ready for fireworks? Back in April 2023, Magic Kingdom brought back their well-loved fireworks spectacular, Happily Ever After, which takes place pretty much every night right before the park closes. This show also features impressive projections across Cinderella Castle, so if you want to make sure you don't miss out on those, then we'll probably stake out a spot around Main Street USA or near the Castle Hub pretty early, like 30 to 45 minutes before the first firework blasts off. Okay, hope you slept well because we are headed to Epcot today. Are you ready? Now, 
Let's talk rides. I'm not saying that Genie Plus is a bad idea for Epcot. In fact, if we're visiting during a busier time of year, like spring break or Christmas season on an extended three-day weekend or the very first day of a new Epcot festival, then Lightning Lanes could be nifty to have in our back pocket, especially for getting on some of the more popular rides when crowds are getting to be really busy and wild. But typically, we're not really going to need Lightning Lanes for our Epcot day since there's so much to do here aside from just riding stuff and there aren't that many rides to start with. Now, the two rides that tend to see the highest wait times during the day are Frozen Ever After and Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. But if you can hit up either or both in the morning, then you should be set for success the rest of the day. After Remy and Frozen, our next two most popular rides are Soren and Test Track. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm not talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Well, it is the most popular ride in Epcot, but it's also the newest ride, which means it has a virtual queue still. Now, this virtual queue does tend to fill up relatively fast. If you don't want to fight for your spot in that virtual line, then we can always book an individual lightning lane for it instead. It's going to cost us extra but we can do that. Now, around 11 a.m., if we're lucky enough to be in Epcot during a festival, we're gonna eat around the world because of course we are, you are there with me. So Epcot food is some of the best park food hands down, but if I'm there during a festival, I'm probably gonna spend at least one meal just grazing around those festival options, going through those booths. Each festival comes with dozens of food booths for you to try, and there are also tons of activities and showcases, lots of stuff going on for each festival. By the way, the festivals throughout the year are Festival of the Arts, which we call farts, as you know, Flower and Garden, Food and Wine, and Festival of the Holidays. And of course, we're going to start eating at those food booths right at 11 a.m. because that's when they open and we don't want to wait in a lot of lines. Now, once we're done eating around the festival, it's time to thoroughly enjoy Epcot's World Showcase Pavilions. And this is the perfect opportunity while the headliner rides are swamped. So we're gonna take our time going through and exploring the different pavilions because they are the coolest part about Epcot for me. Most every pavilion has restaurants and shops, entertainment and exhibits that reflect that pavilion's country. So if you're all about traveling the world, this is your chance to visit 11 countries in just one day. And while you're in World Showcase, you may wanna also check out the American Adventure Show that happens here throughout the day. It's one of my favorites. I used to go see that with my dad all the time. It's an audio animatronic performance and it recounts those vital points in America's history. So if it's cool with you, we're gonna definitely go see that. Now, Epcot's other rides, Spaceship Earth, Mission Space, Grand Fiesta Tour, starring the Three Caballeros, Living with the Land, oh, bless its heart, The Seas with Nemo and Friends, Journey into Imagination with Figment, these can be ridden pretty much any time during our day since their weights are never too bad. And honestly, they probably get lower during the day because they're up there in the front of the park. So a lot of people go to those right away just because they see them first. Like Spaceship Earth is going to have its longest lines probably right in the morning as soon as the park opens. Everybody gets in line for that because it's the first ride they see, right? So we're going to just sort of sprinkle these throughout our day. Although we have to, have to, have to ride Spaceship Earth because it is my favorite, favorite ride probably in all of Disney World and we also have to ride Living with the Land. So those are my two deal breakers if you're going to go to Epcot with me. And let's talk about where you're going to find your best Disney pals roaming around the Epcot scene too. This is the list of the most popular character meeting spots in Epcot right here. Many characters do tend to pop up around World Showcase too though. We might see Alice in the UK Pavilion, Princess Aurora in France, Mulan in China, Snow White in Germany, and Asha's been near the World Showplace Plaza lately. Basically, there are a lot of character sighting opportunities that change daily. That's why it's good to have the My Disney Experience app handy. That way you can get a good idea of who's meeting and greeting on the day we're there. And in the evening, so maybe our food booth nosh session didn't hold us over until the fireworks. Well, we can dine at one of Epcot's popular sit-down restaurants like Space 220 or Le Cellier. That's one of my favorites. Now, Space 220 is going to let you dine on a prefix menu inside the Centauri Space Station, 220 feet above the Earth. Le Cellier is like a Canadian wine cellar with some of the best steakhouse cuts and poutine that we're going to find on property. I just love it there. But that's okay, I will go to Space 220 if you want to. Now, looking for something brand spanking new? Then Shiki Sai Sushi Izakaya in the Japan Pavilion just opened this past August and features Japanese delights like sushi and teppan items, plus an open sushi bar and grill. If the food's getting a little too adventurous for us though, I'd recommend picking up some fish and chips from the Yorkshire County Fish Shop window in the UK Pavilion. That'll make things real quick and make sure we can get on a bunch of other rides. Or we can swing by the American Adventure Pavilion for some bar 
barbecue favorites at Regal Eagle Smokehouse. That's also one of my favorite places to go these days in Epcot. And finally, let's check out those restaurants with a little extra character. Maybe we do want to do a sit-down restaurant, although I don't think we're going to be that hungry after all that food at the food booths, but that's okay. If you make me, I will go to Garden Grill in the Land Pavilion. You know how I feel about it, but I'll go. Just kidding. Those of you who have watched this watched this channel for a long time know that I love Garden Grill, and I will go any day to Garden Grill. I love that place. And you can meet Mickey, Pluto, Chip, and Dale. And then there's Akershus Royal Banquet Hall. That's in Norway. That's where you're going to meet a bunch of princesses. So if we didn't go to Cinderella's Royal Table yesterday, we can go to Akershus today. After dinner, we are going to head over to Journey of Water inspired by Moana. This is a brand new attraction and it won't have epically long lines in the evening because it's kind of a walkthrough attraction. It's primarily for kids. And if we're there during a cool time of year, nobody wants to go because they don't want to get wet. And then when we're done with that, we'll go find a spot to watch Luminous, the Symphony of Us, which is Epcot's brand new fireworks spectacular that just started up. It features fireworks, of course, and fountains, lasers, lighting effects, classic Disney songs, and it's all over there on World Showcase Lagoon. Luminous only plays once per night, but there are also light shows that happen on Spaceship Earth, the Big Epcot Ball, each evening, and those light shows happen about every 15 minutes. All right, day four for us is going to be a bit of a rest. I'm an old lady and I get tired. So we're going to take a little rest day at our resort or maybe go to Disney Springs. So here are a few things that we can do on our rest day. First of all, we're going to sleep in and we're going to take advantage of everything that our hotel has to offer. We can also spend our break day doing a little resort hopping. Not every Disney resort is going to be easy to hop to. Some of them are kind of out there by themselves, like Coronado Springs and Animal Kingdom Lodge. But if we're staying at one of the Skyliner or Monorail resorts, we can hop on one of those modes of transportation to travel to another Disney hotel on the same route. Pretty easy. On the Skyliner, we can get to Pop Century, Art of Animation, Riviera, Caribbean Beach, Boardwalk Inn, and Yacht and Beach Club. And on the the monorail route, we can go to the contemporary Polynesian Village, Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. So if we feel like leaving the room or the pool, we can head over and check out some resort. Or if we want to be even more active, we can go over to Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. This place has tons of outdoor activities like archery classes and kayak and canoe rentals and Segway tours and horse rides and even a full on dinner show at Hoopty Doo Musical Review, which is going to require advanced dining reservations for us as well as advanced payments. Or if you want to do some more shopping and dining around Disney Springs, cool, we can do that. And for a nice sit-down meal to wrap up our evening, we can have Chef Art Smith's Homecoming if we can get a reservation. We can go to the Boathouse, Haleo, Raglan Road is one of my favorites. Please get me bangers and mash all the time. And Morimoto Asia is also on my list. Now, I hope you feel rested because we spent all day just chilling and doing like chill stuff, right? <laughs> So day five, we are heading back to the parks. We're going to one of my favorite places in all of Disney World, Animal Kingdom. So even if you're still battling that theme park hangover from Magic Kingdom and Epcot, Animal Kingdom isn't going to be as taxing on us as the others. There just aren't as many rides and it's super chill in there and lots of opportunities to just sit for a little bit and appreciate where we are. And yes, I promise I'm going to take you to Nomad Lounge and we're going to get all the delicious things and we're just going to sit and chill for a little bit because that's what I do when I'm in Animal Kingdom. Now, AK doesn't have a whole lot of rides to choose from, which makes it easy. So unless we're visiting the park during a time we know it's going to be packed, which of course we're not, then you're more than likely not going to need Genie Plus in the morning. That being said, don't count out all Animal Kingdom Lightning Lanes just yet. An individual Lightning Lane for Flight of Passage might be one of our best purchases that we can make, might be well worth our cash today. All the other rides here have pretty manageable weights, but Flight of Passage stays long all day long. We're talking two hours on average, and I don't want to wait for two hours. I don't think you want to wait for two hours. So if we've got to decide between Genie Plus or an individual Lightning Lane, I'm team individual Lightning Lane. Disney hotel guests can purchase an individual lightning lane as early as 7 a.m., but all other guests will have to wait to get theirs once the park opens. Since we're staying in a Disney hotel, I hope we can get our 7 a.m. individual lightning lane for Flight of Passage. Now, even though we bought the Flight of Passage individual lightning lane, I would still recommend starting our day in Pandora so we can hop in line for Navi River Journey, which is going to rack up the second longest line of the day. Kilimanjaro Safaris is also a good option to start the morning with since the animals will be more active during the cooler temperatures and you might get to hear that lion roar as he looks out across his realm in the morning. Now for lunch, 
We could hit up a quick service like Satuli Canteen or Flame Tree Barbecue, maybe around 11 a.m. or around 1 p.m. so we avoid those hungry crowds and packed out tables, but I think instead we are going to go to Nomad Lounge because that's what I love to do, like I said, when I'm in Animal Kingdom and the wait list opens up at 11 a.m. So we're going to head over there right at 11 a.m. when we're done with Pandora and Kilimanjaro Safaris and we're going to get some drinks and some lounge bites, maybe some lobster mac and cheese, some soup, and we're just going to sit and relax and enjoy each other and enjoy the beautiful views. Now, if you don't happen to get out of your Kilimanjaro safari right at 11 a.m. and you don't get to Nomad Lounge and there's a huge line, that's fine. We're just going to open up the My Disney Experience app and check out the walk-up wait list and get ourselves on the walk-up wait list so that as soon as there is availability at Nomad, we can head there for lunch. Now, in the afternoon, we can probably pretty easily hit up some more rides like Dinosaur, Expedition Everest, Kali River Rapids, Triceratops Spin. Usually they've got waits that range around the 20 to 30 minute mark. Though that doesn't mean they can't spike during the day, especially around the mid-afternoon. There is one ride, however, that we may be able to skip the bulk of the line for, since Expedition Everest does have a free single rider line we can use instead. When the ride lines are feeling unreasonable, though, this is a good time to step inside an air-conditioned building and watch one of Animal Kingdom's Broadway-style shows, like Finding Nemo, The Big Blue and Beyond, located right outside Dinoland, USA, or Festival of the Lion King over in Africa. And I usually don't recommend seeing It's Tough to Be a Bug, which happens inside the Tree of Life, because I don't like bugs, and I don't like when Disney does things that make it feel like bugs are on me. However... Disney has announced that they'll be replacing this creepy crawly Bugs Life themed 4D show in the future with a new Zootopia show, which we're excited about, but this might be our last time to see a Bugs Life, so we might have to go see it, but I have to sit at the end of the row so that I can get up and walk out if I don't want to be poked by bugs anymore. Now, this might surprise you, but Animal Kingdom is actually quite the hot spot for character meet and greets, so maybe we'll head over and meet some characters. We're going to check on our My Disney Experience app because that's going to tell us when we can see them. If we don't have time to meet any of the Disney characters in the afternoon, but we'd like to at least wave at them in passing, then we can check out those Animal Kingdom character flotillas that are floating down Discovery River from time to time. Maybe we saw a few of them at Nomad Lounge, though, so we might not have to go out of our way. But you can see Timon and Pumbaa, Pocahontas and Miko, the dino-rific versions of Chip and Dale, members of the Fab Five, and several other characters that may swing by to catch a boat ride and say, Wingapo. Okay, it is time for dinner. We're gonna have a nice sit down meal that the kids might actually sit down and stay seated for over at Tusker House. This is the one and only character buffet inside this park featuring Donald and the gang all dressed up in their safari gear, ready to say cheese for some more than memorable photo ops. Also has really, really good food, surprisingly. Most buffets you never really know, but Tusker House is pretty reliable. Now, if the kids rule our lives and they are making us go to Rainforest Cafe, we can do that too. The food isn't great and it's too expensive, but there are a bunch of animatronic animals and it's kind of cute. While there aren't any major nighttime spectaculars at Animal Kingdom like there are at the other three parks, AK does have a seasonal projection show called Tree of Life Awakenings. This usually only happens when it gets dark before Animal Kingdom closes. <laughs> So it's not really going to happen during the summertime. But if the winter rolls around and that's when we're there, then the Tree of Life Awakenings will probably be happening. Okay, so after that, we're probably going to call it a night because, you know, again, we're probably pretty tired. Or we can go do some night swimming, which is another one of my favorite things to do. So we can go back to our hotel and do a little night swimming before we all fight over the shower and go to bed. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed your super chill day and your super chill day at Animal Kingdom. So two chill days in a row, right? Because now it's time for Hollywood Studios, which is go big or go home. This is our fourth and final park. It's got the most rides we're going to want to ride. It's got the most going on. It is going to be a busy, busy day. So wake up. Let's go. In the morning, we are going to get Genie Plus. It's great to have on hand during our Hollywood Studios Day. Without Genie Plus, though, I'd recommend rope dropping this park or getting here 30 minutes early with your early theme park entry benefit because you're going to need a head start. Lots of folks are going to start off their day by piling into the Rise of the Resistance line inside Galaxy's Edge. Not a bad idea, especially since this ride can get finicky and has an infamous reputation for breaking down. But we can also purchase an individual lightning lane for that one to help us bypass the main queue altogether. 
Now, if we're in need of a morning pick-me-up before or after we ride on Rise of the Resistance, we can order a cold brew black calf from Katsaka's Kettle to get a taste of totally unique coffee topped with sweet cream cheese. That's right, sweet cream cheese and chocolate puffs. By the way, the sweet cream cheese, think of it like cream cheese frosting or icing. It's not frosting or icing, but like that sweet vibe instead of like the cheese and coffee. Don't, it, that's not what it is. But anyway, all that being said, I think we probably are going to buy Genie Plus and that individual lightning lane for Rise of the Resistance just so that we can do and see everything in one day. Okay, other A-tier rides like Tower of Terror, Millennium Falcon, Smuggler's Run, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Toy Story Mania. These tend to have fluctuating weights throughout the day, which of course are probably going to peak in that midday time frame. We can keep track of them on the My Disney Experience app. The rides that wind up with the lowest weights tend to be Alien Swirling Saucers in Toy Story Land and Star Tours in Echo Lake. So those we can wait till after lunch and we can hit those up then. That being said, Star Tours is going to get that all new Ahsoka scene later this spring and some other scenes too. So there might be a slight uptick in the lines here when those go live, but probably not a huge one. Now, as far as rock and roller coaster is concerned, because I know you're worried about it, right now it's down for the count again, and it will be down for extended maintenance until later this summer. When it does finally reopen, this ride is going to get pretty popular, making it a good one to snag a lightning lane for with our Genie Plus. But just so you know, rock and roller coaster also has a single rider line option if we're okay with breaking up our group for a potentially shorter wait. In the middle of all the dark and thrill rides, though, we're definitely going to get some snacks. Hollywood Studios seasonal treats can be awesome. You're going to find limited edition snacks all throughout the park at places like Hollywood Scoops with their seasonal shakes, Woody's Lunchbox with the seasonal lunchbox tarts, Trolley Car Cafe with seasonal cupcakes, and lots of other places that are going to provide us with the sweet stuff that we crave all year round. Oh, and there are some good stage shows we can see at this time of day as well, especially if those ride lines are getting way too long. The three big shows we can check out if you want to are Beauty and the Beast live on stage, Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, and the first time in forever, Frozen Sing Along, which we probably won't go do unless the kids are here. However, when fall rolls around, there's going to be a fourth one called The Little Mermaid, A Musical Adventure. So if we go in the fall, we might need to go see that. If we've got really little kids in our group, they may be interested in yet another stage show called the Disney Junior Play and Dance, where we're all allowed to dance and catch bubbles and have an all around good time hanging out with some popular Disney Junior characters. Yes, this is exactly what you think it is. And that's all I will say about that. Now, while these performances have a few set times throughout the day, there are also continuously running shows in the park, like the fabulous Muppet Vision 3D, Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy, which everyone always forgets about, and Vacation Fun, an original animated short, which is basically just going and watching Mickey shorts in a big theater. That's a good place to go if you kind of need a little nap. Now, keep an eye on the show times because they typically hold their last showing about an hour or earlier before the park closes. Okay, for real though, those thick afternoon crowds are starting to bottleneck. That's why we're making an advanced dining reservation for dinner. We're going to sit, we're going to relax, we're going to get in the AC just for an hour or so. And here are our choices. 50s Primetime Cafe, Sci-Fi Dine-In, and Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. 50s Primetime is that retro style kitchen that you're sitting in mom's kitchen and your cousins are serving you. Plenty of sassy family members pick on you while you eat home style cooking. Sci-fi dine-in is exactly what it sounds like, even though it's like nothing you've ever seen. You're sitting in a convertible car in an outdoors, except it's indoors, drive-in theater, watching cheesy black and white sci-fi clips and eating home style food in a dimly lit setting. Roundup Rodeo Barbecue is the newest restaurant in Hollywood Studios. You're going to find it in Toy Story Land. It's super colorful. You're basically sitting in Andy's room and you're shrunk down to the size of a toy. And you're basically eating a bunch of barbecue food in and amongst giant cardboard cutouts of toys and stuff. But honestly, the best restaurant in Hollywood Studios by far, as we know, is Brown Derby. This is a signature restaurant that's got a variety of California-inspired cuisine. They've got burgers, but they also have incredible steaks. They've got that famous Cobb salad. Now, if we can't get a reservation for this one and we want to go there, we might try going to the Hollywood Brown Derby Lounge instead, if it's not raining and it's not too hot. 
Now after dinner, we can walk it all off by going to see a few characters. Chip and Dale like to hang out in the grassy area in front of the Grauman's Chinese Theater to host a picnic every now and then. Goofy and Max could be caught strolling the balcony of Tower of Terror. Free-roaming Star Wars characters like Mando and Grogu tend to pop up around the planet of Batuu over there in Galaxy's Edge. And we can also do meet and greets with the Big Cheese himself. Okay, now I told you this would be a long day because Hollywood Studios stays open late. Whether we've purchased Genie Plus to help us or not, the next busiest ride we're going to brace ourselves for is Slinky Dog Dash in Toy Story Land. Now, this is a really, really fun one to ride at night, so hopefully we snagged a lightning lane for this. But if we didn't, if you didn't want to buy Genie Plus, that's cool. We're going to wait till the end of the day to get in line for this one because it might be a little bit shorter. And when we get off Slinky Dog, of course, it's time for Fantasmic. This is Hollywood Studios' nighttime spectacular that features water technics, pyrotechnics, live actors, popular Disney music, puppetry, bright lights, lasers, so many goosebump-worthy moments that you're just going to have to see for yourself to get the full impact of how cool it is. The amphitheater is ginormous, can seat a whole lot of guests in a single show, so even if we show up 15 to 30 minutes before, we hopefully can get a seat. Maybe we got a fantastic dining package earlier in the day when we had lunch and we just get a seat anyway. We'll see when we plan out the trip. Finally, when we're making our way out of the park, we're gonna see if we can catch Hollywood Studios' projection show, which happens across the Grauman's Chinese Theater each night. So this has been a really, really fun trip. I've had a blast with you. And I know we didn't do everything in Disney World because of course we can't do everything in Disney World. We have to sleep at some point. But I think our trip was pretty epic. And there's still plenty of planning left to do. So be sure to check out our other Disney World videos here on our channel. And don't forget to download our free Disney World planning worksheets over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disney plans. Let me know in the comments what other things you'd want to do while you were in Disney World. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.